Welcome to the Believe Bible Study. I'm Christy with ChristyWoods.net. I am so glad that you are joining me in this study. I'm excited to see what the Lord has in store for us to see how our belief will change by the end of this study, or if it will. But I have a feeling that it will. Back in November, I think it was, the Lord dropped one word into my heart. And I'm not a one-word girl, so I knew this had to be the Lord. And it was the word believe. That's where this Bible study started. I can't say that I know exactly what God is saying with believe, but I know he's calling us to search him to find out more about our own belief. And so that's what we're going to do in this study. We're going to dig into God's word. We're going to look at four examples with Jesus specifically of how people either believed or didn't believe. And then we're going to use that to challenge our own faith, to challenge our belief and see where we stand. We're going to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us, to come in and filter in his wisdom, and then walk accordingly. So this will be a group effort, but really it's a one-on-one. -on -one. It's us and God, one-on-one, -on -one, right? A couple of housekeeping notes. We will be meeting every Tuesday from now until May 14th. This is a great study for busy women. It's only four weeks long. I love those. The videos here will only be about 10 minutes, give or take, so they're pretty simple to listen to. And then, each Tuesday evening, starting at 7 Central, we will meet on Zoom, which is a video conferencing, online video conferencing site. It's free, so just make sure you sign up. The link will be below the video here on the blog, so look for it there. I will also put it on my Facebook and Instagram pages as well. So... All you do is you sign up first with Zoom, you'll click on that link Tuesdays just a little before 7, and then at 7 o'clock sharp, we're going to start. We're going to video conference together and go through some questions and challenge each other and just spend some one-on-one -on -one time together. And I have to tell you, like, I'm super excited because I can't wait to hear your voices and see your faces and spend time together. Yay, it's good. All right, another housekeeping note. Don't forget to go to the subscriber library and download your copy of the Believe Bible Study Outline. I call it a lot outline. Mm, I, that's a loose term. Basically, it has questions, areas for you to take notes, action steps, and further study notes as well on it. So every week it's here. Um, there's just one download that's for all four weeks, so you can download it once and then just use it each week with us. But again, don't forget to download it. It's in the subscriber library at christywoods.net, and it's called Believe. You will find it there. So make sure you subscribe. Um, we've talked about Zoom. Bring a friend. Don't forget to bring a friend. I'll have one with me. I call her the mystery guest for right now. She will be here for the Zoom conference calls with us, and I can't wait to introduce you to my friend because she is like joy. When I see her on weekends, she is nothing but joy. Every time I see this woman, she is joy, and I know you're going to enjoy my mystery friend who will be doing the Zoom video conference with us as well. All right, so that's it. So let's dig in, shall we? Do you have your Bible? If not, grab it and open it up. Let's take a look. This time, we're going to be in Mark 9, 14 through 29. And I'm going to open up my Bible online here. I'll be reading from the NIV. This is the most recent NIV version. I um, mean, this is a story about Jesus healing a boy possessed by an impure spirit. I love this particular one. I called it releasing if, when circumstances dictate differently than faith. Sometimes we have to just release the if in our lives, don't we? And our if might look different than other people's ifs, but those ifs are there, aren't they? So I'm going to read real quick the passage, and then we're going to go through a few food for thought items, I shall call them, okay? When Jesus came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and the teachers of the law arguing with them. As soon as all of the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. What are you arguing with them about, he asked. A man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought you my son who was possessed by a spirit and has robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. You unbelieving generation, Jesus replied. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? 
bring the boy to me. So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him into the fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that a crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the impure spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said. I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet and he stood up. After Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, this kind can only come out by prayer. And there are other versions that say this prayer, this kind can only come out by prayer and fasting. All right, that's Mark 9, 14 through 29. And again, I read from the NIV, but you can read or dig into any version that you want. Ah, releasing if. That's where we're at today. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that you have given it to us and that it's rich and that it guides us and leads us well. May we hear your voice. May we hear your guidance today in this word. In Jesus' name, amen. Verse 18, this is the one we're going to go to very first. And let me scroll back up. I have my computer here with the word on it. It says, whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. You know, some of our situations that we face often simply require, I say simply, it's actually profoundly with the power of, it's a hard situation, but requires the power of Jesus Christ. That's what we need in order to be healed. It's not the purposes or actions of other people. And sometimes we place our trust more in people than we do in Jesus. This can be evidenced. Well, think of it in your own life. Maybe you have situations. Sometimes in my own, when I get really upset in a situation, that often is indicating to me that I'm putting more trust in people, whether it's myself or somebody else, than I am in the Lord. There's peace where he's at, even in the midst of the storm and in the trial. So it requires, our situations often require the power of Jesus to heal us, not the purposes or actions of people, but sometimes we do look to people. And also, I'm going to throw out just a little carrot. Sometimes we even look to pastors, to leaders, spiritual leaders, or to people that maybe authors, maybe they're speakers, we've gone to events, that sort of thing. But it's Jesus who heals. Remember that. Keep eyes on the prize, and that's Jesus in heaven, right? He is the healer. Verse 19 says, You unbelieving generation, Jesus re replied, How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. There's hope here as Jesus bids the Father to bring the boy to him. As soon as he says those words, Ah, oh, those are hope-filled words. And guess what? He has already said, Come to me in his word to us. He's calling us to. We can bring our healing needs to Jesus. He welcomes them. But remember when we think sometimes those problems are too small, or maybe that they're, we're too far gone, or maybe whatever the situation is, just bring them. He calls us to bring those problems to him. Verse 20, it's a reminder that even in the presence of Jesus Christ initially, their appeal appeared to be no evidence of healing. So go back in your Bibles and read that scripture again, verse 20. There appeared to be no evidence. And sometimes we face that too, don't we? That in our situations, they don't change. And we wonder why they're not changing. Maybe it's somebody else that we want to be saved or to change for the better to help our family. 
what's healthy and right for our families. Or maybe it's, who knows what? Hang tight. Just put trust in Jesus. Sometimes those situations will change. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they do. And sometimes they simply take time. Verse 22. It's a reminder to us that the intent of darkness is to kill, steal, and destroy. Don't forget that. That it, as long as we are on earth, it's the middle of a spiritual battle for each of us. And that the enemy's attempt is a hard attempt, a fervent attempt. The spirit in this boy intended to kill him. That's what it wanted to, and it had tried over and over and over. It might have succeeded at some point. We don't know. But Jesus came into the picture and changed everything. His power is not a question of if. And this is in verse 23. This is some of the notes that I came up with from that. Go back to all the healings that we find in the Bible. Man, they're threaded throughout the New Testament, especially, especially the Gospels. We also find them, though, even in the Old Testament. He's threaded throughout each one. We serve one whose ability isn't based on pixie sticks or those Jenga blocks. I mean, it's not a matter of if we do this, will it tumble or will it be okay? No, that's like the shifting sand. It's not a will it, will it or won't it situation. All things are possible for those who believe. All things. Verse 23 talks about, if you can, said Jesus. Everything is possible for one who believes. The key here is that the man owned his unbelief. It's best just to get honest. Throw it out there. God already knows our thoughts. He already sees. He knows the words before they even form on the tongue, let alone before they're said. He knows what's going on. Why not just set them before him and just converse one-on-one? -on -one? You, God, yeah, everyone. He owned his own his unbelief and it served the Father well. The question is, have we owned ours? Take a few minutes. Ask God, is there unbelief that I'm carrying? Show me my unbelief. Are we wrestling with it and we don't realize it? We might be. That's why time with the Lord is imperative. It's helpful. It's right. We live in a I'll believe it when I see it society, don't we? I can think of that multiple times, but we as Christians are called to live by faith, not by sight. So that whole, I'll believe it when I see it belief system doesn't ring true in the Christian realm. Jesus has something different. Consider Hebrews 11, 1 through 6. Look at the miraculous events our Father authored in the lives of others. That's called the Hall of Faith. Go take a look at it. Again, it's a Hebrews 11, 1 through 6. And there's some amazing people mentioned here that we see God's mighty hand at work in their lives. This should give us hope. All things are possible. But intentional decisions to believe reaped great rewards in each one of these, lives, these people's lives. They heard God, and then they walked forward in that belief. So let's turn and hear God and walk forward in that belief. Belief stands big. How big is yours? Further in that segment of scripture, we find the disciples asking Jesus why they couldn't cast out the spirits. Even they, man, they were strong followers of Christ who walked with Jesus, for goodness sake. They were right there with him the whole time. But yet they were questioning, why can't we pray this out? Why couldn't we tell this spirit to go and it went? But it required not only prayer, it required fasting. Lead us to believe, leading us to believe that perhaps those weren't part of the picture. I'm not sure. But prayer and fasting, when aimed toward the Almighty, lead us straight to his power. They give, us give us opportunity to hear him more clearly. They kind of clear out the clutter. Yeah, so it's good. So today my question to you is, how big is your unbelief? Go to the Lord and ask him. Soak in the scriptures. Again, it's Mark 9, 14 through 29. Park there for a little bit. Don't forget, 7 p.m. tonight on Zoom. You can click the link below. I will see you there and we will 
discuss this further.